welcome to part three of Classroom Management, Rules and Procedures. Let's recap where we've been. In part one, we discussed how an organized classroom contributes to a well-managed classroom. We reviewed a sample classroom layout and noted how materials were well marked and accessible to students. In part two, we reviewed the benefits of work time and tools and strategies that teachers use to ensure this time can meet individual student needs in a structured and organized manner. Now, in part three, we'll end this module with a focus on the role that rules and procedures play in maintaining a well-managed classroom. Let's review the indicators for this part. All teachers display classroom rules and procedures in the classroom. All teachers reinforce classroom rules and procedures by positively teaching them. All teachers correct students who do not follow rules and procedures. Have you seen classrooms where students and teachers seem to really enjoy one another? How are these positive social interactions created and sustained, and how do they contribute to a well-managed classroom? It has a lot to do with rules and procedures and the expectations for behavior that a teacher establishes. Expectations for behavior and interactions are a prerequisite to positive student-teacher relationships. It is also our first success indicator of Part 3. All teachers display classroom rules and procedures in the classroom. Remember the classroom layout we reviewed at the beginning of this module? In it, there was space dedicated to the display of rules and procedures. These rules and procedures should be prominently placed, introduced early in the year, and consistently reinforced. Rules and procedures are not the same thing. Classroom rules generally describe expectations for behavior, how students are expected to treat and interact with one another, the teacher, and the classroom materials. Rules are most effective when there are consequences for breaking them and rewards for following them, and both are consistently enforced. Keep the number of rules minimal in a classroom. Three to five is a good rule of thumb. When students know a teacher's expectations for good behavior, there are fewer class disruptions and learning time is maximized. Classroom procedures are instructions that students are expected to follow for specific activities. For example, entering class, dismissal, seeking help, submitting homework, and transitioning. You've established your rules and procedures. Now, how will you teach them to students so they know they exist to support their learning and development and not to interfere with it? This addresses our next indicator. All teachers reinforce classroom rules and procedures by positively teaching them. Let's hear from a few teachers on their approach to positively reinforcing rules and procedures. The classroom procedures that we, we go through, um, at the beginning of the year I spend quite a bit of time, at least the first two weeks every day, going through what, I don't even call them procedures, I call them expectations. Mm -hmm. Um, and what what's expected in the classroom and and why it's expected we talk about you know you know what they want to accomplish what their goal is for the year and at the beginning of the year they all you know we want to get the A and, and we talk about what a classroom has to look like for them to be successful like this teacher do you take the time at the beginning of the year to talk with your students about your expectations for their behavior both in terms of how they treat one another, rules, and how they engage in activities, procedures. Do your students know that rules and procedures exist so that they have every opportunity to succeed? Approaching classroom rules and procedures in a positive way sets the foundation for a successful learning environment. Now, we'll hear how another teacher approaches, in a positive way, her classroom rules and procedures. I think it's important to always have to give students chances. I don't think they all come to our classrooms knowing the rules of etiquette, knowing what to do. So I feel like the first sort of line of, of sort of getting rid of any kind of diffusing any kind of problem is really to, you know, to really accept that maybe it's just a child who doesn't know. Um, 
I also find that, you know, if you become combative and defensive or argumentative or sort of um, dem start demanding things, then the student becomes a little more interested in a, a second level of engagement. Clearly, this teacher takes her role very seriously. She believes in building content knowledge and skills, as well as proper behavior and etiquette. Did you notice how she empathizes with her students, giving them opportunities to learn the rules and procedures, and then expects her students to take those skills outside of the classroom? What else did you notice about this teacher's interactions with her students, particularly as it relates to the reinforcement of rules and procedures? Let's take a look at this indicator in action in another classroom, where a teacher explains her use of praise in reinforcing her rules and procedures and creating a positive learning community within her classroom. The praise kind of motivates them. They get very excited if they know that the teacher is going to say something positive or the other students may say something positive. Um, I really want to com have that learning community within the classroom where it's not just coming from the teacher, but it's coming from the students. And sometimes you'll even hear the students say, oh, that was a good idea, you know, praising each other. And that's important to me. It's not just coming from the teacher, but I want them to listen to each other. Um, along with the verbal praise, a lot of it is the tickets. They love to get the tickets. And in order to get tickets, usually it's for justification of answers not just that they said yes, no, prime, composite, but they've justified their answers and that's my goal with the tickets. And then once they've justified, they know that they can apply that ticket towards one point on a test or one, they can collect them up and apply up to 10 points per test or assignment. Did you notice how she uses praise to reinforce rules and procedures? What do you think? Was it effective? Let's take a look at how that same teacher combines praise with her classroom rules and procedures in action. A lot of times in the class we'll go into like learning groups where I'll ask them to discuss something and then when I want to get their attention right away, um, we practice a few times at the beginning of the year. It doesn't always work immediately, but just things like um, if you can hear me clap once, if you can hear me clap twice, and sometimes I may say, if you can hear me clap three times, or I'll do the numbers out of order so they have to key in and, and then remember to not only do that, but stop and get quiet and stay quiet so that they can hear to whatever I have to say. Thank you for stopping and being ready to listen. Um, some of the other things, I'll use a clapping of a rhythm, and they love that one, but of course they want to do that more than I want to, so we'll do that periodically and get their attention. And again, make sure that they understand it's not for the rhythm, but it's so that I have their attention and can either give them directions or ask them some questions. Did you notice that she did not have to raise her voice to get her students' attention? With practice of rules and procedures and with the use of praise, in this case, thanking her students for cooperating, she has created a positive learning environment for her students. Do you use something similar to this in your classroom? What impact did this teacher's approach have on you? When you return to your classroom, revisit the rules and procedures you've developed and include a plan for how you will positively reinforce them.